It's time for Dark Castle! Dark Castle is a Macintosh game released in 1986 by Silicon Beach Software, creator of such productivity software like Super Paint, Super Card, and Digital Darkroom, along with games like Airborne and Apache Strike. Yes, Dark Castle was ported all over the place for reasons I don't really know, but I don't really remember those, and, well, the Angry Video Game Nerd already did a couple of those ports, and they're just awful and sloppy. And you pretty much need a mouse to play these games anyway. Yeah! Besides, Macintosh is where it's at. I remember this from when I was a kid, and it's awesome at- Oh, come on, that didn't count? Heh, <laughs> well, it has been a while. Let's try this again- Oh, come on, that doesn't count either? Okay, this is kind of annoying. Wait, there's a pit there? No! What? No! Come on! Duh! No! <laughs> what was I saying? Oh yeah, I love this game. Basically, it goes like this. You're an unnamed hero going after the Black Knight that's been terrorizing this random town that we don't really know much about. For some reason, this hero thought it was a bright idea to try this armed with nothing more than the clothes on his back and a big bag of rocks. Hey, at least this guy brought something, unlike Mississippi Smith. But who does this guy think he is? You know, you're infringing on someone else's idea. Using rocks to defeat a giant foe was property of David. He also kind of looks like he's wearing a trench coat when he's lying on the ground. I don't know, kind of like Inspector Gadget. Kind of looks like his coat. So, since you're kind of ill-equipped to take on the big bad Black Knight, you're out to find two things to help you on your quest. A magical shield, which grants you the ability to dodge enemies and other dangerous objects, like... brooms. Okay, seriously, that kills me! How does something like that kill me? It's just sweeping! Ahem. <clears throat> the other thing you have to find is a wizard who can grant you the ability to throw fireballs. He doesn't seem too perturbed that you barge in, does he? He just gives you the spell and kind of zaps you away like you were a light annoyance while he was sitting there reading. What about all the other stuff going on around him? Does he not notice the fire-spitting eye floating around out there? That's an oblivious wizard. Or maybe that's all his stuff anyways. There's also a dungeon level which, ironically, is harder to delve into than it is to get back out of. If you end up in here, you have to go in, grab a key, do not grab the key if the prisoners are shaking their heads, and then backtrack through. Ah, damn! Oh, and if you fall into a pit, you end up in the last room on this path. Every. Single. Time. You get very familiar with these rooms. How am I supposed to see where these pits are? It blends in. The only way to know is through sheer muscle memory. Especially when you've got all this other crap to worry about. Heck, it kinda looks like a platform sometimes. How do I know that's a damn hole in the ground? It looks like you could walk right over that. <sighs> now I'm remembering this game a little more clearly from my childhood. I couldn't get past any of the rooms, much less a whole section of rooms. I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. None of the walls are marked, so I'd run into dead ends and feel like an idiot. You have no clue where you're supposed to be going. How are you supposed to know where the exits are in this game except by trial and error? Okay, I've been looking back at this game through the heavily rose-tinted glasses of nostalgia my whole life. I'm sure everybody's guilty of that was something. So this game is not at all perfect. For one thing, take a look at this room, Fireball 2. This room is a freaking nightmare. Why? Well, the jumping works like this. You hit space to jump. If you're not pressing anything else, then it'll just do a normal high jump, which gives you a moderate amount of horizontal movement. Jumping while moving does a long jump, letting you cover more distance, and if you're holding down and you jump, it does a very short, low downwards jump. So that only makes three ways to jump. Okay. Try platforming with any sort of precision with that. This makes this one of the most frustrating rooms in the entire game, and that's not even counting the stalactites that fall at certain times. Then if you get through that room, you have this room with barrels and moving platforms. Ah, damn. Get the shield first. Just trust me on that. It helps. A lot. And the shield isn't too hard to get anyway. So, we've established an order to go through the levels. Shield, then possibly trouble if you're unlucky, fireball, and then the black knight. That's another thing about this game. The two doors on the left side are random for each game. So, if you go through one of the doors, you might end up going for the fireball, you might end up in trouble. So, we're going for the shield first. Well, for shield one, you end up in this room where this guy's throwing rocks down at you. 
They actually bounce relatively realistically, meaning they're just about plain old rolling by the time they're at the end of the current platform. Hey, you know something? This looks familiar. This level's not too hard if you're careful. Then on to Shield 2. Well, these vultures are a pain in the ass. They keep respawning, they keep making you waste rocks or just plain hope that they don't dive down and kill you. The dragon seems more dangerous, but he can be easily stunned by the vat of water on top, or you can just time it right and run right past him, and your mother! Well, I guess I just found a new glitch. Then you move to Shield 3, which is apparently rat hell. But if you have Elixir and some decent timing, this shouldn't be too much of a frustration. Kill the bats first, though, a tip that should apply to any room that has bats in it. They don't respawn, and they drain your elixirs fast if they get to you, especially if you can't get them off, like, say, if you're climbing ropes. Ah, yes, the elixir. Forgot to mention what that was used for. Well, there are rats and bats scattered around the castle that are all carrying the plague. But for each rat or bat that bites you, if you have a bottle of elixir, you use one up and you save your life. And if you don't have any bottles of elixir when one bites you, you die instantly. I didn't know the plague looked like someone pushing you over and knocking you to the ground. That's like in King's Quest where drinking a bucket of salt water makes it look like a desert sniper finally found you. <laughs> then Shield 4, ironically probably the easiest room of the shield path. Just kill the bats and then go and pull the lever. The platforms that turn black are the ones you can jump on. Yeah, that seems kind of counterintuitive. At first I thought it was the white ones that were the solid platforms. That would make sense, right? Ah well. A lightning is easy to dodge, a phrase you will never hear used in real life. Each cloud will do a strike and then take some time before it strikes again. So time it right and go up to the left side of the shield, grab it, then hit the action button again to raise it up a second or two before the lightning strikes you, and BOOM! You are now infused at the powers of the magical shield, which will be really helpful for the rest of the game. So then it's time to go for the fireball, but if you're unlucky, you might end up in trouble instead. This is the name of the room as well as your situation, as working forward through these rooms is worse than going back. I've already mentioned most of the important things about these rooms besides in Trouble 3. Get rid of the bats before you grab the Morning Star there and knock over the guy with the whip. Because for some reason you can't kill bats with a mace. Tell me how that works. And get the key quickly or you'll get stuck back there because your idiot of a character doesn't keep the weapon. And don't trip over the fat lug. How the whip guy survives being hit in the head with a mace is beyond me. That's impressive that his brains aren't on the floor, much less that he gets back up in rather short order. Speaking of tripping over things, your in-game avatar, he's, uh, to put it bluntly, a klutz. He's well animated, yes, but I mean gameplay-wise. He trips over small, tiny ledges and gets stunned for a few seconds, and if you even lightly smack into a wall, which you do a lot of when you're trying to figure out where the heck the exits to a level are, he gets dizzy again. Though I do remember thinking the noise he made was amusing when I was a kid. Whoa! Anywho, the fireball rooms. Fireball 1 is like Shield 2. You have a ton of vultures, and I hate them. Along with these annoying mutants. I mean, listen to the noise they make. Yeah, they're freaking annoying. I have no idea what they're supposed to be, but the game calls them mutants, so I'll call them mutants. Oh, and be careful not to trip over the ledge. Like I said, your guy's a klutz. Yeah. Not too much to this level. Past the vultures, up the ropes, and on to... Ugh. Fireball 2. I hate this level. But it really does a good job of showcasing why this game is not meant to be a full-on platformer. Yes, with some repetition you learn what works and what doesn't, but it's hard to predict what won't work, and that's assuming you don't just fall through the edge of the platform. It's rare, but it happens. Oh, come on, that stalactite already landed. So, assuming you get past this, you exit through here. Once again, kill the bats first in this level. This level's hard enough as it is. If you were smart and got the shield first, you could protect yourself if a cave spike decides to try and drop on your delicate little head. Fireball 3. This and the next room, you basically need the shield. Makes this room especially a million times easier. Just dodge the incoming rocks with the shield, hit the mutant with a rock, jump over with a running jump, bam, you're on to the end of this path, Fireball 4. In Fireball 4, you're confronted with a fiery eyeball and a broom. This broom will kick your ass. If you try to kill it, it just splits apart and you wonder, how do I get past this thing? 
The answer is to get up next to it and keep pressing that shield button, and then run away. You actually can jump over it, I managed it once, but I don't really know how to do that and I've never been able to repeat it. But anyway, on this level you have to go across these platforms. The eyeball can't be killed, only stunned, but thankfully if it's stunned you can go right through it. Then you have to get up here. Make sure to keep stunning that eye while you guess the combination to the wizard's room. Each lever is used only once as far as I know, so there's only six possible combinations. Then you jump into the room and walk onto the little indentation in the floor. The wizard will give you the power to throw fire and then send you back to the Great Hall. So now that you have the shield and the fireball, all you have to do is face the Black Knight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's all. <laughs> Oh, not to mention reaching him, without ending up in a pit and going back to Trouble 3, again. So, Black Knight 1. I thought Shield 3 was rat hell. I guess we've reached the second circle of that particular hell. Not to mention the guards that can shoot you off a rope or platform making you lose a life, or possibly worse, go back to the dungeons if you fall into a pit. You need elixirs, and lots of them. It's basically impossible to get through here without getting hit by a rat. So, if you don't have much elixir, use the one thing the dungeons are useful for. Jump back down there and restock on some elixirs. You need them, trust me. So, if you make your way through the plague-infested pile of rats, you move on to Black Knight 2. This one is kinda tricky. You have a guy throwing rocks at you, and at the same time you have to jump along moving platforms. Oi. Luckily, you can actually kill this guy and stop the rocks. Oh, one thing about the Black Knight levels. Did I mention that those gargoyles that swoop in and drop you in the pits back to Trouble 3? Forgot about that, they're the reason you need the fireball spell. The shield you need for very obvious reasons, there's a lot to dodge here. Ah, no! Okay, it's time to get serious now. Alright, let's do this thing. levels all over again, just for a few more attempts at the Black Knight. There's no way to train the later levels aside from sheer repetition of all the earlier levels. Alright, get the shield. You know, this game wouldn't be so frustrating if you didn't get sent to the dungeons every time you fall down into a pit. Though you don't lose a life when you fall, so it does keep you from having to do the shield and fireball levels again, too. Which are even more of a pain to have to do. Again. Ah oh, yeah, I got the fireball. Now it's time to head for the Black Knight. Concentrate. Can't screw up now. Can't let the guards hit me. Can't let the gargoyle carry me off. Alright, rush past this. We're hardcore. Alright, almost there. Just have to do some ninja moves up here. Kill the rock henchman. Wait for it. Kill the gargoyle. Yeah, now let's go to the next... You! You've evaded me for 15 years. But now that you're in my sights, prepare to be vanquished, Black Knight! Though it's kind of a lame boss fight, I expected this guy to come after me, fight me like a man. But this infamous Black Knight is just a drunkard who throws empty mugs at you. Basically, you have to pull all the levers. Pull the bottom two on the wall first, though. They extend each side of this platform, which lets you pull one of the chains. I got lucky and just pulled the bottom two levers because they were easier to get to. I didn't realize what they did until after I watched the gameplay footage again. So go for those two levels first- YOUR MOM! Okay, he has a wicked throwing arm, and there's the gargoyles on top of everything. He's not quite as lame as I thought, but he's going down. Wait in this safe zone, kill the gargoyle, can't go clear back now. Not after everything I did to get here. Gotta time it right, go up the rope, don't get hit by another mug. Go for the levers. Now! Yes! Yes! Yeah! I... Wow, I... I beat him. I beat the Black Knight after all this time. On... Beginner. Wait, what? There's two other difficulties to this game? Aw oh, man, no way. Besides, a gargoyle comes and picks you up while you're dancing like a dork and pups the difficulty up, so I did get to experience some of Intermediate whether I wanted to or not. And I am not beating Intermediate anytime soon. I did get the shield, but... Man, this is just crazy. I mean, on Fireball 1, a guard comes in behind you almost immediately. I mean, 
What kind of cheap sauce is that? Besides, we don't really even know what the Black Knight did. All we saw of him was him drinking an entire tankard of beer up on his throne up there. Yeah, he's got prisoners in his basement, but maybe that's not his fault. Maybe it's this torturer that's the source of this town's misery, how do we know? This dude could just be enjoying his booze and here we are charging in like a bunch of jerks. Okay, it's conclusion time. Time to wrap this thing up. Dark Castle, it's a decent game and it actually looks pretty good for 1986. But on the negative side, it's a bit buggy. The game tries to force some crazy platforming on you with clunky controls. The aiming system doesn't really let you pick off the amount of enemies you need to on later difficulties, at least not with the little experience I have on the later difficulties, and your character is a total buffoon. Although, maybe it's just my nostalgia, but that seems to be a part of his quirky charm. I finally beat it though, yeah, eat it, Black Knight! The police in here are friggin' insane. EVERYONE! They'll ram anything in their way to try and kill you, and I mean anything. Often killing civilians or even themselves in an attempt to run you off the road. 